my first big steps as a young rider was always to chase goals, to chase um, a factory ride already since when I was nine, ten years old. Uh, when I went to, to visit the GP, my dream was to be, become a factory rider and to be in that big tent. And I, I believe besides the talent, you need to have a really, really good work ethic to put in the hours, put in the time, take all the sacrifices, what comes, uh, comes with it to, to make it happen. My first memory of Jeffrey is actually a little bit of a funny experience. I was at the Dutch championship race and uh, I was watching the ATCC class. And I saw a guy coming by and I thought he had a bike problem. I thought his throttle got stuck. I said, oh, that kid was so lucky because he made it through the corner and he disappeared in the forest, you know? And one lap later, the same kid came through again and I thought like, he still has the same problem, but it turned out to be Jeffrey Ellings, and on that ATCC, he just had it wide open all around the track. I've never forgotten that. <laughs>What makes the, uh, a guy talented as a, as a motocross rider, I believe um, it's, it's a combination of many different things. First of all, you need to have the, the technique to be, to be a great rider, because without the technique and the talent, you, you will not get there. But at the same time, you also need to have the work ethic, you need to have the dedication, you need to have the right team, the right material. So it's a combination of many things, but it all starts with having the pure talent and the gift from above for being a good motocross rider. definitely not my favorite of tracks it's so much up and down and it's super slick on top left all the small stones we could have the option between an mt32 tire or a scoop tire a scoop tire means more like a pedal tire which will be better for the style because it will launch more sand but for a track like this hard it's very difficult to run it on track but just knowing for the start it will be definitely an advantage what do you think tony scoop or no scoop <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I don't think he wants to. I thought it was more wet when I said it yesterday. Yeah. And bullet. You tell me, mate. Now we have a nice. pretty uh, sketchy already. It's, it's already looks so many square bumps and loose though, loose and square. Yeah, but the scoop was too much. Yeah, wow. no worries. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I know it's better for the start, but yeah, yeah the stones, dude, it's fucking it. You need to be top five on the start. The rest is fine. Yeah. Okay, we've got an already an idea for. I've been riding my dirt bikes for a long, long time by now, but I think already since a very young age, around seven, eight, nine, ten years old, you could see. I was pretty okay on a motorcycle, let's say, and uh, pretty gifted. Yeah, definitely we could never have dreamed of, of what I've accomplished right now, but uh, already back then you could see I could do something with a motorcycle pretty okay. Of course, the 61 is stronger. He was good on the start and there he is out of break. But the guys around him were already in front. trainer, rider coach, let's say, for the group. Um, so I'm trying to um, to transfer my experience from the past uh, to the actual riders. I'm, yeah, it gives, it gives really a lot of satisfaction. I'm enjoying it a lot. 
My main job is, of course, to, to help the, the top guys. But um, yeah, I still every now and then go and watch the youngsters, the 85 CCs, the 125s. Um, yeah, looking looking for young talent, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see to see also new kids, new talent. Uh, yeah, the motivation with the kids and stuff like that. that like yeah, the, the real the real passion. Let's say that they're carrying. So no, no, I still do that. For the, the position yeah. three, four, five, five, all good. Yes. So no, but it's true. If the if, yeah, the, if the second is free, can help a little bit, for sure. Okay, we go for that one then. Yes. If that's free, then we go for that one. Yeah. If you see a rider who's really fast, yeah, you can say he is talented until a certain level because at the young age speed doesn't always mean pure talent it can also be that the kid is very brave that he's not scared to open the gas what we're especially looking at is of course their technique their position on the bike um, yeah how how they take the corners how the position of the arms the position of the legs the position of the feet um, yeah how they read the track which lines they take which technique they use for the jumps and stuff like that if you take for example uh, riders like uh, Antonio Cairoli or, or Jeffrey Erlings they were at young age already excelling you know of course then yeah then you have real champions but that you don't always see at uh, at the younger age I'm not sure we're going to get time, but yeah, I'm still trying to. Running late? No, we're good. So we still do a start or? I, I want it. Yeah, if he comes now, we got 15 minutes. <laughs> Another one? Yeah. We've got time, haven't we? Otherwise, nah, we're going, that was we're going too early. Ah. I just want to go through the motions. Got to warm them up. I've got them on the cycle and everything. Shit, you think you could find Yeah. Wow. But honestly, the drive off the, off the grid was good. Riders making their way to the grid. And the bullet, Jeffrey Hurlings, up and down in the qualifying races this year, up and down during the season. Still trying to race himself into full fitness and confidence. Fly racing and board up for the final time today. Gate drops here, except for uh, one of the beaters who gets parked on the line. Might have been Watson. And it's Prado, Fenfro goes down in turn one. And he's up, that upside down, Hurling's in there as well. In 19th place, Jeffrey Hurling's at the moment. It is a choppy, brutal track here in Trentino. Hurling's really carving his way through the field now. And Lupino gets picked off by Hurling's. Hurling's now 13th. I didn't know how many laps were left, so I was still, I was still, I was still getting excited. I was like, oh, there's enough time." I'm like, but then I looked at the clock and went two laps. I went, "Not enough time." <laughs> How's it feeling? It felt better. It's just hard to get like the, just just from home fault. Like I couldn't make the lap good. Always had like two or three good sectors, and then you know I had someone in front or burn broke or I messed up myself. Like yeah. couldn't good. get the. The, but yeah. the one and only thing that I have to say from my side yeah. is just trying to open it up as much as possible. Yeah, More flow, yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. Lucky first motor with a start, but uh, the speed at least was there. We came from that last to nine, and very happy and pleased with that to have made a good step. And also, like speed wise, came from 40th to, uh, to ninth. Now we have the speed to race for the podium. Wicked kick there into the turn. 2 of Van Donning. 
Lance Hurling's up the inside of Guillaume. Fifth place, he's got Ruben Fernandez right there ahead of him for Team HRC. Just starting to look a little bit more like his old self, though he raced himself into full fitness and maybe full confidence mode. Watch this here, inside left, middle rut, gets on the gas early. The first three riders on the same part of the racetrack for the first time. This race, focus on this battle for the lead as Hurlings goes through into second. Renovo fighting back immediately. He's a little bit out of shape and Hurlings takes over the lead. He wins here the second race in Italy. It's his 189th race win. Two totally different races for you. Damage limitation in race one, hard charge through the field. Race two, what a ride to pick up that race win. Yeah, definitely. First moto actually had a really good start and uh, came in one of the front guys and then uh, I think from uh, front wheel washed and I ran into him and uh, yeah, I was dead last. So yeah, second moto, the start was average around uh, eighth, ten or something like eight or tenth. But then I was like, oh, and I was like, let's press beast mode because it's not working like this, the ride always defends. So I was like, I have to go back to the old Jeffrey Former Moto and then after that we'll uh, see again. And that's what I did. And um, yeah, I showed what I was still capable of. So uh, unfortunately, due to the first one, I lost some points throughout the weekend, but uh, looking forward to Portugal in two weeks' time. Okay, after the start, we separate and then. Uh, I, I don't think you should call this start. This start was not really. <laughs> that's, why it, that's why it was a tryout. Okay. <laughs> the GP only got one opportunity. Also, the grill is not like this. Huh? Yeah, we tried, but hey, life is not perfect on a Tuesday after. Obviously, I worked with Jeffrey for a long time, who, who is a very, very skilled rider. And I think Kai is very similar. And obviously, that helps a lot when the track gets really technical and rough. Uh, it helps the rider to produce more speed, so go faster. They keep more momentum, so, so that's going to bring yeah, just faster lap times. And, and they get less tired because it, it, it looks effortless for them when they're very skilled on the bike. Je moet niet gaan glijden als je hem op de kant zet. Daar. Je ja. gaat helemaal op de kant. Die wacht gewoon, die staat bijna stil. Ja. Maar die ploft hem niet in die wal. Hetzelfde in de verre, verre langse, lange stuk. En dan die linkse bocht die gevlakt is. Ja. Probeer het daar zo'n beetje voor door te rijden dat je niet dat moment hebt. Ja, maar ik kan je de kant toch niet volgen. Ik ben niet bekend. Nee, maar dat... Je moet Jeffrey Herlings niet gaan kloppen. Je moet proberen je sessies te maken, constante tijden en proberen nu met dat tandwiel de walkers iets te werken. En iets... Je moet van jou, jouw ding verbeteren. Wat je... Jij zit hier, dat maakt niet uit. Jij zit iets frisser, jij herstelt iets beter. Jij moet proberen je 20 minuutjes te rijden en te verbeteren op jezelf. <tie> To be really talented at motocross, I first of all think you need uh, a lot of skill on the bike, uh, a lot of bike time, and um, mental strength is also a big thing in motocross. Um, yeah, you with 30 guys next to each other on the gate, so uh, yeah, you have to make sure you're the strongest, and uh, also mentally that's a tough thing. But uh, yeah, you also have to be prepared mentally. You look at Jeffrey, that's fine. You learn from Jeffrey. But the same on Sunday. Focus on your deal. Read, read what's going on, but be content with it if they are faster. De eerste vijf ronden niet te gek. Maak die wallen een beetje dat je een fijne motor kunt hebben. Op de laatste twee ronden blazen maar alles weg. Ik 
te kijken de verschillende lijnen die ze nemen. Ook al is de baan vrij simpel vandaag, maar toch doen ze andere dingen. Motocross komt ook veel van hoe erg je iets wilt, zeg maar. En, uh, ja. Er zijn er twee die het heel erg willen, dus dat is goed. Hè? Yeah, for sure, Jeffrey always has been a superhero for me. Um, he's been the most dominating GP rider at the moment. Really nice to train with him and get some tips from him. And yeah, for sure, I always learn from him and uh, try to remember what he's saying. Even physical training like I'm doing now with Ruben uh, is quite the same like Je Jeffrey used to do. So um, yeah, it's paying off so far and uh, let's hope we can continue this. I think in the current uh, motocross world, there's a lot of skilled riders. And I think they're all at such a high level that the combination of all the other factors, the mental part, the physical part, is gonna define who's gonna win. That's one of Jeffrey's very strong points. He combines the technical uh, abilities he has with his physical abilities, and then he puts his heart on top of that. And, and that makes Jeffrey such a, uh, a full, complete motocross rider and such a big champion and so many GP victories, in my opinion. Ja, it was a bit of a to say. We were yesterday from Amsterdam and we came to the tassen all three of the die were missed. So we had to improvise a bit and overall wear clothes with each other. We had to ratsle from one sock, from another underbroek, then we had t-shirts at the Primark, we had t-shirts bought. Ja, in mijn hoofd is nu al stress, want normaal is gewoon dat, die pak, die sessie, dat t-shirt daarbij, bij die bril en alles uh, helemaal geordend. En nu is het gewoon, ja, ik heb nu de polo aan van uh, Adamo Maatje S, waar ik normaal een elletje heb. Uh, ja, ik zit nu ondertussen al twee dagen in dezelfde onderbroek. Dus vandaag is het een beetje uh, passen en meten, maar uh, we gaan gewoon lekker rijden. De 101 evenaar is één ding maar. 102 om dan echt uh, lonely aan de top te staan, zeg maar, is toch weer, het, uh, weer, weer een ander dingetje. Dit record staat al uh, 17 jaar, geloof ik, sinds 2006 van Steven Evers. Dus als er iemand een keer zo'n groot record verbreekt, is het eigenlijk het tweede grootste record in de sport naast de wereldtitels. Dus uh, als je dan dit record verbreekt, is het natuurlijk ook wel een, uh, een big thing in de sport. Het is een big fight, you know, Fernandez en Prado, for sure, motivation is going to be high. So... It's going to be uh, get a good start and we know what Jeffrey can do, so we'll be fine. <laughs> Sasha's bike when the track's like this, I don't know if it's even worth testing at one point like line three, but a little bit more sag. Yeah. So we keep like that same balance, but the bike's just a little bit lower. lower yeah. Yeah. Seeing mid corner always struggling. I don't know, it's just a thought. Yeah. Maybe it's worth trying. I think the more sag thing is still uh, a thing we can try. Yeah. One. Okay. That's the track. Ja, is goed. Ja. Uh, we zitten nu in Spanje, het is echt uh, de home turf van mijn grootste concurrent momenteel, Jorge Prado. Uh, hij rijdt andere jaar hier ook altijd zeer sterk, heeft het volledige uh, publiek achter zich, uh, achter zich staan. Ik denk toch wel dat het uh, moeilijk gaat worden om hier te winnen, maar ik zeg nooit nooit. In 2021 heb ik hier gereisd ook gewonnen. Dus ik denk wel dat het erin zit, maar uh, alles moet wel kloppen en uh, die 102 hoop ik toch wel zo snel mogelijk te halen. Coming across his team like there immediately just to open up the first turn. Ben! Devra down! Oh, big carnage! Devra right to the bottom of it. Yeah. He went down. There was a few other riders in there as well. Not sure who. Matt Donick, one of the riders, went down, I'm sure, as well. Devra, Tom Cock, Hardy Ruzio, possibly. Yeah, we've got red flags here. A little bit animated down there. But uh, it'll be uh, another couple of minutes or so, two or three minutes before we resume here. It's Prado who leads away, turnings alongside him. 
Let's see what... And then Fernandez, both the Spanish favourites. Oh, he goes down over the bars. Throws the front end down. Game on again between the 61 and the number 84. Yeah, I'm into the lion's den, they would say. I mean, yeah, when, when I was catching up, uh, a lot of people were screaming, but I don't think they were really cheering for me. So, uh, yeah, I, I try to uh, make a few thousands of Spanish fans not that super proud anymore because I really want to win here. But, uh, yeah, so does Jorge. It's his home GP, and I know when you're racing at your home GP, you always get an extra boost. So, he was riding great today, and uh, I, I assume you'll be doing the same thing tomorrow. My advantage for tomorrow would be to have the 10 minutes longer that my hopefully my physics can come into play because I felt like throughout the moto I was really catching up on the end stage of the of the moto so yeah that's where hopefully I can when the GP will be on the end. So bad, dude. Yeah. yeah. Feels like. What was the RPM that time? Yeah. What was the RPM? Between 10.5 and 11. Yeah. Slightly reduced number of riders then after what happened in the qualifying race yesterday. Who will it be that grabs that all important foxhole shot? Jorge Prado has six to his name at the moment. Who will it be that grabs it here in MXGP race one? Siwa with the foxhole shot here, his third of the season so far. Guadagnini tucks in behind him. Herling's there behind him in fourth place. And Herling's around the outside. Moves into third, pushes Prado back to fourth. Guadagnini now leads. The bullet all over the back of the Red Bull Gas Gas now. Probably a position that Guadagnini's never been in before, actually. Leading a race with the bullet behind him. And Hurling's round the outside. Handful of clutch as well, midway through. Through the waves, we have a new leader. And it's Jeffrey Hurling's on lap 12, down the final turn. The Red Bull KTM rider wins race one. No celebrations there. But uh, race win number 191 for Jeffrey Hurlings. Prado second. Um, yeah, after the motor, I try to get my clothing off as quickly as possible. And, and with, the hot te with the hot temperatures, I try to cool my body down a bit. And then, uh, yeah, try to do a little spin for the legs and uh, yeah, to get them, get them fresh for second motor. I knew my first motor is always my weak point. You know, I really feel always like I need to warm up a bit. And normally, second motor, I'm always a bit, bit better and a bit stronger. But uh, today, we uh, got off to a good start around fifth, uh, pretty quick into third, then I got overtaken. So I got sent back to fourth and then was really looking for some good lines. Managed to pass uh, Prado for, for, for third, then passed Siwa for second, and obviously uh, passed uh, Guaranini for the, for the lead. And then I managed to, to check out, basically, and and win the first moto. So it's the first time this year I've won a first moto. So uh, yeah, it's good to start off the, the day like this. Yes. The most casual person I've ever seen before the start of a Ooh. race. Jeffrey. Casual? Yeah. Ah. Over there talking with some people. Yeah. <laughs> Whistle's gone.
Let's see who gets the whole shot here. Well, the fly race in 15 second board about to be turned to five. And as we say that, the heads go down, the revs go up. All eyes on this run down the long start straight into turn one. A good jump for Guadagnini, 101. Siwa, a great atmosphere here as Fernandez leads in front of the main grandstand. Siwa second, Guadagnini third. Hurling's there, just coming into view in fourth place. Being Hurling's just really on the hunt here. Yeah, really on the hunt. Jeffrey Hurlings down the inside. Uh, Siwa left the door open, a lap ago, and uh, Hurlings capitalised on it. He rehearsed that move, a lap ago, bounced off the berm, didn't quite work out for him. This time, Hurlings does slip up the inside into third. All of a sudden, Siwa now down in fourth place. Jeffrey Hurlings this time does get the better of uh, Mattia Guadagnini, moves into second place on lap nine. Is he going to win GP 102 with a double race win in Spain? As he goes around the outside, he takes over the lead from Fernandez. It's a drag race to the next jump. And Hurlings does go through. Is that Beast Mode? <laughs> Beast Mode activated, I think he called it in Portugal. Beast Mode, yeah. He wins the Spanish Grand Prix, and history has been made here at Into Xanadu Arroyo Molinos. Jeffrey Hurlings tops the all-time win list, 102 Grand Prix victories for the bullet. Jeffrey Hurlings on Red Bull KTM. It's pretty insane. I mean, even though the, the, the Lions there at uh, his home place, it's pretty nice. I just want to thank myself, because I'm the one who did it, so... Uh, Thank you to myself and obviously the team did a good job and uh, everyone else who was involved in this long journey to come from from, the, from uh, zero wins to 102. So I'm happy to be leading this record just by myself now and hopefully many wins will, will follow. And uh, this weekend I felt pretty good, so hope to keep improving like this. So uh, we'll see. Thanks, Jeffrey. I mean, yeah, it will take a while before this record gets broken again. I mean, 102 GP wins. I, I, if I just think about it, like counting them all off, it's so many. So, um, yeah, that's uh, a lot of a lot of race wins. But I'm super happy to have accomplished this goal. I already had the most moto wins, and now to also have the, the most GP wins, it's pretty amazing.